challenges, in our opinion, seem to have overwhelmed our security institutions. The governors are supposed to be the state security officers of their state. There is need for us to at least engage the traditional workers. We need to do something about our porous borders. We have to run it from the unit level to the world level to the local government to say, Mr. President, the importance of today for us is for us to take action. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have been. We can only uh, come in through oversight, but the decision on how to deal with the leadership of NIDA remains with the ministry. Senate worries over leadership tussle at NIDA calls for legislative and executive intervention. NEMA should not be under any ministry, it should be directly under the presidency. And. Senate recommends the placement of NEMA under presidency. This is Inside the Senate and I am Husayna Amina Aboki, your anchor. Budget defense is at its peak with Senate committees working around the clock to scrutinize the budget of the various ministries, departments and agencies under their purview. In this episode of the program, we bring you reports from the committees on science, technology and innovation, anti-corruption, Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, Federal Character, amongst others, as they interacted with the various heads of agencies wading into issues of concern, appraising budget performance while critically looking at proposed budget estimates for 2023. We also have a report of an oversight visit by the Committee on Drugs and Narcotics to the headquarters of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. Please stay tuned for the full package after the break. Senate to send a message to the President to reap opportunities from that. Today is a matter of urgent public importance. And we are aware that when this particular motion comes up, for a longer term development, arise to scold the motion. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Welcome back. The leadership tussle between two personalities, Dr. Felicia Ewenzo and Dr. Joseph Ajakaye, who each presented themselves as the Directors General of the Nigerian Institute of Trypanosomiasis and Onchocerciasis Research, Naita Kaduna, was the main topic when the committee once again hosted the Institute on Tuesday the 8th of November 2022. It would be recalled that the problem manifested itself during a budget defense organized by the Senate Committee on Science, Technology and Innovation on Tuesday the 25th of October 2022. How did the committee proceed? Details of these alongside reports from other committee rooms are captured in our first report on the program. Keep watching. Arising from these confusions, Kick-starting the session, the committee chairman, Senator Uche Ekunife, acknowledged that a correspondence from the Ministry of Science and Technology affirmed Dr. Felicia Nguezo as the authentic director general of the institute. However, at the Eastern's headquarters in Kaduna, there is sharp division among the staff between those loyal to one Dr. J.J. Ajakai and Dr. Felicia N.C. Nguezo this situation made it extremely difficult for Dr. Felicia Emwazo, the officially recognized vaccine director general of the institute, to have access to her work in the headquarters in Kaduna. On his part, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Senator Olorunibe Mamura, who supervises the institute, expressed sadness at the state of affairs in the institute. What is happening is NITA is something that is depressing because it's the manifestation of brute force, intransigence, self-help, intimidation, threat in that place. What we met on ground was what you mentioned. Dr. Enwezo, having been duly appointed, 
as overseeing DG. But as at the time we came in, we understand that um, there was a court judgment to the effect that the hitherto existing board be reinstated. A position that the ministry through the legal unit has already gone to court on appeal. He added that two boards existed in the institute with one headed by one engineer, Nuriani Adamu, and open to political resolution of the long jam supporting Dr. Enwezo, while another led by Honorable Haruna Shehu Lambu supporting Dr. Ajakaye and allegedly viewed as the aggressor. Why the Nuriani Adamu led board agreed with the ministry and stepped back? The Lambu led board just continued on their own to do whatever they liked. In fact, at a point they were going to have a meeting, the meeting that they had to suspend, to claim to have suspended, even without recourse to the ministry. I got wind of it and I called him and, and tried to restrain him. He went ahead. He took their decision and had the audacity to write me asking me to issue a letter of appointment to the so-called Ajakai. The committee chairman called for both the executive and legislative arms of government to intervene in the matter and address the problem. It is affecting the operations of NITA. And NITA is such a big agency that we cannot continue to see and watch them while the office is not uh, being operational. That. I think we have to get the office of the Secretary to Government of Federation involved about the appointment of the, the chairman of the board. And as a committee, we, we can only um, come in through oversight. But the decision on how to deal with the leadership of NIDA remains with the ministry. The minister then confirmed that Dr. Felicia Nguezo is the one known to the ministry as the acting director general of the institute. As a result, she was accorded the power to present the 2023 budget proposal, which she disclosed as follows. Personnel cost 1.96 billion naira, overhead cost 23 million naira, capital expenditure 425 million naira. She lamented the death of research staff at the institute and disclosed that out of the 849 staff in NITA, Less than 200 are research staff. We have a, a bug in admin, non researchers. But we have a real need for employment of research When last did you employ? I think that was in 2019. In fact, we even got an establishment to even employ for this year, but they said we didn't have money. The research funds are also under the capital. But what we are pleading is um, if they can this time around you know, separate research that are yes. not going to be finished in one year to have his own uh, uh, money distinct so that this issue of mop-up not affected. After several other contributions, the committee promised action on the figures presented. That should be stopped. You always want to conduct seminars abroad. The Committee on Anti-Corruption and Financial Crimes on each part hosted the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit led by the director, Mr. Modibo Aman Tuku. In a submission, Mr. Tuku disclosed that the agency facilitated the arrest of 15,000 drug suspects with the data it provided to the NDLEA, while also enhancing the counter-terrorism efforts of the federal government, thereby saving it from listed international sanctions. Speaking on the capital component of their 2023 budget proposal, he lamented a repeat of an occurrence in 2022 in which 110 million naira was appropriated, but with the intervention of the committee, it was increased to 1.2 billion, adding that the same scenario happened in the 2023 proposal as only 110 million naira has been appropriated. This 110 million cannot even buy the rate at which we work. If we can get, sir, we want the one for the previous year to be returned. And this is our prayer to you. Because now they reduce it from 1.2 billion. 1 
One of the activities embarked upon by the agency is having staff to attend meetings abroad, during which they are addressed by an individual. The committee's vice chairman spoke against it. Why shouldn't we bring him to Nigeria to that where wider, wider participation can be attained? The amount of money we spend in going to listen to one person, I think it's not worth it. If you are limited by any of the laws establishing you from speaking directly to the public, you probably have to address us on that. Yes, because you are back office, you feed other institutions. And thanks to your efforts that you said, you provide the information leading to this arrest and also blocking of numerous accounts. The meeting was concluded behind closed doors due to security exigencies. Inside the Senate will now take a break to open the Senate's notebook. When we return, more reports from the committee rooms. Don't go away. Gavel is a mallet used by the presiding officer during the Senate plenary or a committee proceeding for commanding attention, announcing the end of a deliberation or confirming a legislative action. It is so important that it is used by all legislatures around the world. Welcome back. Another agency that appeared for budget defense was the Office of the Senior Special Advisor to the President on the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. The Senior Special Advisor, Mrs. Ade Joke Orelope Ade Fulire, led her management team before the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, chaired by Senator Aisha Tahir Ahmed. Even when the budget document was submitted on the same day of the meeting, the committee chairman in her welcome address proposed two options for its perusal. Madam, you can speak to the document so that we can, if, uh, if there are any questions or if there is need, we can just excuse you people, ask for another meeting day, or if otherwise, if members are satisfied, then raise or come up with questions that uh, germane questions and then we call it a day. Responding, Mrs. Adia Fulire disclosed their proactiveness in laundering of the image of Nigeria viewed as one of the worst countries in the world. We are doing so well in Nigeria because oftentimes when we discuss Nigeria problems, they think Nigeria is the worst country. It's not the worst country. It's one of the best countries so far. All the crises that we are seeing, it's not limited to Nigeria alone. And then we have to join hands with the government of the day to ensure that we mitigate and see how we can contribute to the reduction of the crisis that we have at hand. Speaking on the 2022 performance, she disclosed that the releases are domiciled with SDG's office, of which 100% performance has been recorded in project execution in different constituencies across Nigeria. For 2023, she disclosed that 65 billion Naira is being proposed through the envelope system and urged the committee to increase it in view of the huge task ahead of them. The committee chairman, Senator Aisha Tlahiru, promised action on the document while the rest of the meeting continued behind closed doors. Meanwhile, the Committee on Federal Character also hosted the Office of the Secretary to the Federal Government of the Federation. One of the issues that sparked reactions during the meeting was the response of the Permanent Secretary of the Office to a question seeking their nominal role to ascertain the level of federal character balancing in the office. The staff of the office are pool officers from the Office of the Head of the Service of the Federation and Accountant General and other pool offices. The office does not have a federal character uh, balancing in it. It's, it's, it's not true. You have 12 amount of money that's fixed for this. What is it for? That's for junior officers, which is which is domiciled within the. Junior, those junior officers must come from your village 
since I came on board, we have requested for all agencies and government uh, departments to present to us nominal rules of their uh, various organizations. And, and that is to make sure that we ensure from this side that they conform with federal character. On the performance of the 2022 capital component of the budget, the permanent secretary disclosed that there is a capital release of 1.509 billion naira, representing 50.7% of the amount appropriated. He also disclosed the 2023 proposal as follows. Personnel cost, 4.6 billion naira. Overhead cost, 7.2 billion naira. Capital expenditure, 3.4 billion naira. Total, 15.4 billion naira. After several other contributions, the committee promised action on the budget as presented. For more reports from the committee room, let's take this next report as compelled and presented from our studio. That this Neman should not be under any ministry. It should be directly under the president. The Committee on Special Duties hosted the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, on Monday, the 7th of November 2022. The Director General of the agency gave their 2023 proposal as follows Personnel cost 1.7 billion naira. Overhead cost 774.1 million naira. Capital expenditure. 162.1 million naira. Not satisfied with the capital proposal, a committee member suggested placing NEMA under the presidency to attract more funding in view of the huge task ahead of it. Automatically, maybe the National Assembly must have to cease, uh, look for something to do in charge of, in form of legislation to bring you directly under the presidency. Another member lamented the non-functional status of local and state disaster management committees whose failure to complement NEMA is weighing down on its effort at mitigating disasters like flooding. We are little thing will happen in a community, they will leave local government, they will leave state government, they will rush to NEMA. What is actually going on? So where is the advocacy campaign? Where is the, is the, is the awareness you know, for citizens also to know their rights? As we speak today, I have written to all the 36 state governors and I have copies to show you four times. Mr. Chairman, it's sad to note that only four states have local emergency management committee. Only four states. Some states, as we speak, same as don't exist. They don't have state emergency management agency. How do we manage disaster from bottom up when you don't have, some states don't even have SEMA? The chairman rounded up the exercise with a suggestion that disasters should be categorized into minor, major and catastrophic levels and distributed amongst the various levels of government to handle, with a view to reducing the pressure on NEMA. I meant to understand minor disasters are to be handled by NEMA, that is local, and then major is to be handled by SEMA and then catastrophic is what is under the law to be handled by NEMA. So I think probably to reduce more pressure on NEMA, maybe you need to categorically you know, clarify this issue. Uh, what is major, what is minor, and what is catastrophic? You can only come in under catastrophic. Outside the National Assembly, the Committee on Drugs and Narcotics paid an oversight visit to the headquarters of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. This was on Friday, the 4th of November, 2022. On arrival at the headquarters of the NDLEA, committee members were received by the chairman, retired Brigadier General Mohammed Buba Marwa. Later in the conference room, the committee chairman, Senator Hezekiah Ayubadimka, in an address expressed delight at the achievement of the chairman since assuming duty. Before we came, we know what was to be done. And with your management staff, Your Excellency, you've gone so far that anybody hearing about NDLA in Nigeria today should know that whatever is given to you to see that NDLA succeeds will support Your Excellency. I want to thank Mr. President Buhari. Uh, 
for all that he has done to see that NDLA has come to stay. And for you to be the head of this organization, the success is nulous. All I will say is to pray for you and for the support you have given us to in the National Assembly, the cooperation has been wonderful. Speaking on one such achievement, the chairman disclosed the latest success record by the NDLEA in form of the seizure of 2.1 tons of raw cocaine in Ikorodu, Lagos, with a street value of $315 million, equivalent to 230 billion naira. He stated that this success could not have been recorded without support from the committee alongside other stakeholders. Today, people talk about the positive changes that have taken place in the NGLEA. But what they may not know is that there are forces that make these changes happen. These forces include individuals and groups that work behind the scenes to empower NDLEA to live up to its mandate. And I want to say that the Senate Committee on Drugs and Narcotics is one of such NDLEA's most important supporters and backers. We formally conclude we, we formally convey our gratitude for the roles you have played and continue to play in our modest achievements thus far. Most significant is the amendment of the NDLA Act, which the esteemed committee chairman proposed. After a PowerPoint presentation exposing the various methods of concealment deployed by drug pushers to conduct illicit acts, the committee expressed commitment at according its full cooperation to the agency to deliver on its mandate. That was a summary of the budget defense exercise ongoing in the Senate wing of the National Assembly, as well as the oversight visit by the Committee on Drugs and Narcotics. To close the program, we will take the profile of our Senator of the Week. Do stay tuned. Senator Francis Fadansi represents Oshun East Senatorial District of Oshun State under PDP. Born on the 12th of July 1952, Senator Fadansi attended St. Paul's Anglican School in Lasse Ijesha for his first school living certificate, as well as a baby in Anglican Modern School at Takumosa, West Local Government Area of Oshun State, for his West African School certificate. He joined the Nigerian Customs Service and rose to the rank of Deputy Controller General before retiring to join politics. He contested and won election to the Senate in the 2019 general elections. He is Vice Chairman of two committees, namely Senate Committee on Custom, Excise and Tariff, as well as Senate Committee on Trade and Investment. He is also an awardee of the National Honor of the Order of the Federal Republic, OFR. His legislative interests include economy, education, and agriculture. On a sad note, the death has occurred of Mr. Tunde Jonathan Mark, son of the former Senate President, Senator David Mark. A statement signed by the media aide to Senator David Mark, Mr. Paul Mume, stated that he died in a London hospital after a brief illness on Friday, the 21st of October, 2022. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. With that, we come to the end of the program inside the Senate. The program will return next week with another fresh package of legislative business in the Senate wing of the National Assembly. Until then, Thanks for watching.